Canada is showing signs of being in a real estate crisis. In Canada, we are known for a couple things. Maple syrup, hockey, having the most debt per person, and having astronomically high real estate prices. And with this massive amount of debt sitting against Canadians, does that mean that the real estate market is going to fail and we're going to see a bigger crash than what happened in the US in 2008? And from the viewer's perspective, I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts are on what the Canadian government can do to actually help solve this affordability crisis that is going on in Canada right now. It's hard to believe that in cities like Toronto and Vancouver that people are going to have to live with their in-laws until they're like 50 years old just to save up enough money for a down payment in order to afford what the purchase prices are in these two cities. Seriously, people outside of these cities won't actually believe how much it costs to purchase a home in Vancouver and Toronto. Well, this leads me to my next question. How bad is the current real estate market here in Canada? And I'm gonna be sharing some really depressing stats about the real estate market and what we're currently facing here in Canada. Let's take this back to 2008, where we saw mortgage-backed securities take an absolute turn for the worst, causing the real estate market to crumble. But let's reflect on it. How did Canada make out compared to the US? During this time in the US of 2008, you saw an average reduction across the nation of 15.8% in one year in the amount of home prices. And in some areas that got hit the hardest, you saw 40 to 50% decline in real estate value in the US. Where in Canada, across the nation, we saw a 9.5 drop in housing prices during this time. Here's the really interesting stat, something that blew my mind when I was researching this, that in the US for real estate prices to get back to what they were pre-2008, it took a decade for these cities and these areas to see the same pricing that they had prior to 2008. Where in Canada, it only took two years after 2008 for us to see pre-level pricing all across the nation. We recovered way faster than the US did. My question to the viewer is, why do you think this is? Like, why did Canada recover so quickly and the US took almost 10 years just to see prices go back to what they were before? But here's one of my biggest concerns that I have with the real estate market here in Canada. Real estate prices have more than doubled in the last decade. And our wages here as Canadians have only gone up 24% during this time. And with that being said, how can ca Canadians possibly still afford these real estate prices with their income lagging so far behind? And if you're getting a lot of value from this video and you feel like you're learning something, hit that subscribe button. It means the world to me. It really helps my channel. As I mentioned earlier in my video that prices in Vancouver and Toronto are literally mind blowing and hard to fathom what it actually costs in order to own a home in these cities. But the more mind blowing stat and what I can't seem to wrap my brain around is that over a quarter of the population live in Vancouver and Toronto in Canada, where in Vancouver, the average real estate price is 1.2 million. If you're looking to buy a detached single family home, which is the Canadian dream that you have your own backyard, your kids can go out and play. And for an average detached home, it's 2.17 million in Vancouver. So having that dream of a backyard where your kids can just go out and play is literally unattainable for the average person who's trying to make it in Vancouver. Now we move to Toronto where the average price is 1.1 million, but single family homes are 1.7 million to get into that detached home in Toronto. Now let's put that in perspective for what the average Canadian makes on income on what it would look like in order to purchase one of these homes in one of those cities. The average Canadian salary right now currently is uh, of a full-time worker, 72,000 of gross income. So what that means with the current mortgage lending and interest rates where they're at is that person can afford $288,000 worth of mortgage. So whatever down payment you have on top of that is what you can afford. So if you got $100,000, that means you can afford a home that's $388,000. With that information, let's look at it, what it would actually look like in order for you to buy a home in Vancouver. If you were to buy just the average price of 1.2, you would need your household income to be around $300,000 in order for you to get approved for that mortgage and be able to purchase that property. 
Plus, you would need about $240,000 in down payment and then an additional $30,000 that would go towards closing costs and land transfer tax that you have to pay on every single purchase here in British Columbia. And we take that a step further, if someone was wanting to buy a detached home of $2.17 million, you're gonna need to make an annual household income of $540,000 a year just to afford this mortgage. Plus, you're going to have to have a down payment of $434,000 plus an additional $50,000 for closing costs, which includes that land transfer tax. The nice little sunshine tax that every BC person that buys property has to pay. This goes to my next question that I pose to people is, what Canadians are buying these homes? And then it goes to the next question, why do so many Canadians choose to live in these cities where just setting yourself up for the future is unobtainable. A quarter of the population in Canada lives in Toronto and Vancouver, and they do that knowing that they're probably never going to get ahead unless they hit it big in whatever job or career that they're pursuing. And the worst part is not only are the real estate prices in these two cities the highest the, that goes with the cost of living, your groceries, your transportation, everything else is more expensive in these two cities. Just weeding down whatever savings or money that you make, leading towards you never being able to save for retirement or purchase a property, making it extremely, extremely unlikely that the average person is gonna get into the real estate market in these two cities. So what does Canada need to do so the real estate market does not collapse? Canada is the second largest country in the world, but we are 38th in terms of how much population that we have. But here's where the bottleneck comes in. Canada is growing at twice the rate of out of any other G7 country in terms of their population, mostly due to immigration. And just in the last year, we welcomed over 1 million immigrants to Canada alone. For one, I personally believe that immigration is the answer and the success to a lot of the problems that we personally face here in Canada in terms of growing our economy, especially the lack of skilled labor. Immigration is a great option for us to bring in more skilled labor and put these people to work here in Canada to grow the economy. But here's where the Canadian government is getting it completely wrong. The biggest problem for the real estate crisis here in Canada is the amount of supply. We have the lowest supply of housing out of any developed country in the world where for every 1,000 people, we only have 432 units. And it's estimated that Canada needs to build 5.8 million new homes by 2030 just to keep up with the housing demand and to potentially bring down this affordability crisis that is happening here in our country. But with the Canadian government knowing all these stats and know how far behind we are lagging, they are still lacking the amount of government spending and physical policy that they need to put in place in order to get these homes developed. I personally would love to hear what your thoughts are on the Canadian government and what they need to do in order to solve this affordability crisis here in Canada. Drop it in the comments below. We need to get your guys' feedback on what you think is gonna be a good solution to solve this problem. With interest rates being so high, does this mean that the Canadian real estate market is going to be facing a similar fate that the US market saw in 2008? And the stats are coming out that there is a lot of Canadians that are struggling to afford their current mortgages. And for all the people that had variable rate mortgages for when the market was was booming and had these astronomically high real estate prices got a mortgage, these people are even struggling even more and have gotten totally screwed over with their payments more than doubling what they were when they first purchased that property. But where we sit today, less than 1% of all mortgages in Canada end up foreclosing. 